Hi, and welcome to the Student Life webinar. We're going to talk a little bit today about what it's like being a student at SOAS and what you can expect from your welcome week going forwards. My name is Amani and I work in the student recruitment team as a student recruitment coordinator. I help provide information and guidance to students who are interested in higher education. I've also recently completed my undergraduate degree at SOAS in international relations, so I hope that this webinar can offer a little bit of insight into what it's like being a student at SOAS. So just a little bit about what we're going to cover today. I'm going to give you a quick facts and figure summary of SOAS as a university, information on our welcome week, the student union, including the sports and societies you can join at SAS and more widely in London at Student Central, information on university study and support offered at SAS, and finally the City of London itself. So just a quick overview of the SAS student population. We have around 6,300 students um, and around 4,000 distance learners making us a much smaller university in comparison to others in London. Just over 50% of our student population are EU and international students, with students attending SAS from more than 135 countries, which means that even though we have quite a small community, it's extremely diverse and vibrant, and you're likely to meet students from all corners of the globe. We also have around a 50-50 split between undergraduate and postgraduate students, so there really is diversity in our student population. So just a bit about our welcome week. The first week you'll have at SOAS will be your welcome week, or you'll most commonly hear it referred to as Freshers' Week. It's designed to help you transition to studying at SOAS and learn more about your department and university, and to get involved with all the sports and societies we have on offer, as well as meet new people. So it really is an exciting time for new students. You'll have the Freshers' Fair during this first week, and this is where you can go and sign up to any of the societies and sport clubs you might be interested in, as well as the SOAS Freshers Fair, Student Central also hold one, so you can go and sign up to any of their clubs that you might be interested in. There's also lots of freebies, things like free food, gym membership incentives, lots of things like that, just to get you interested in what's on offer. Welcome week is also when you'll go through enrolment, things such as choosing your module, sorting out accommodation if you've not already done so, picking up your student ID card and receiving your timetable. It's also where you'll have your department inductions, usually held to sort of introductory lectures or presentations given by the academics in your department. It's usually quite informal, it's just a way for you to meet the people that are going to be on your course and get familiar with what your programme's going to look like for the year and learn about the academic support that will be provided throughout the three years or four years that you'll be at university. So a bit about our accommodation options. Our main halls of residence of SAS students are Dinwiddie House for undergraduates and Paul Robeson House for postgraduates, both situated about a 20 minute walk away from SAS in King's Cross. We also have intercollegiate halls of residence on offer to SAS students, which are closer to our campus and it gives you the option to live with students from other London universities, such as those from LSE, UCL and King's College London. Finally, we have a number of private halls of residence and other accommodation options, so I would recommend visiting our website um, to the accommodation page to see the full range of options available to you. So, our Students' Union. We have over 200 societies at SAS, ranging from more academic clubs such as Model UN and the Politics Society, to the more unique offerings such as Nap Society, Cocktail Mocktail Society and the SOAS so a cappella. We also have a number of sports teams including basketball, football and rugby and there's an opportunity to take part in the varsity tournament every year against London Met University. There's huge diversity in the clubs and societies we have on offer and plenty of opportunities to make friends within them. Um, whilst I was at university, I joined the SAS Spirit, which is the university's newspaper, and it allowed me to gain so many skills as well as meet lots of new people that I wouldn't have otherwise. If there's something you are interested in, but there isn't yet a society for it, you can go ahead and make your own. You just need to find um, around 16 other like-minded people to create it. Um, if you visit the link that's on this page, soasunion.org, it will take you to our student union website where you can have a look at all the societies on offer. If you're studying for a University of London degree, which you will be at SAS, you're automatically entitled to become a member of Students Central, which is just around the corner from our SAS campus. It allows you to get involved with everything the organisation has on offer, including the sports, societies, online tickets and access into their bars. 
We also have the Student Union, which is situated in our main building. This has the Junior Common Room, or the JCR, which is what you'll often hear it referred to as, with the Union Shop upstairs and a bar and a pool table downstairs. There will almost always be some sort of activity taking place in the JCR, from fetter vegan food being sold during lunch hours, campaigning and fundraising taking place through the various different societies, to live music and film screenings in the evenings and on the weekends. So there really is something for everyone. Being such a small university, you almost always bump into academics and other people that you know, and it just makes for a really warm and friendly environment. So, about our university study and support. Obviously, one of the most important things about coming to university is studying your course. So, as is um, a broadly humanities-focused university, so you'll have around 10 to 12 contact hours per week for your degree. If you're studying a language degree, then you might have a bit more than that, just because they are more intensive programmes. You'll have independent work to do that takes place outside of those contact hours and this can include things such as doing readings for your tutorials and seminars, presentation preparation, as well as submitting coursework for your different modules. Lecture sizes will vary depending on whether you're an undergraduate or a postgraduate and whether um, you're taking a core module or an option, optional module. However, we do tend to have around 15 people in our tutorial groups, which is quite small. This is really good because it allows you to engage really well with the module as well as have meaningful discussions with your academics and your classmates within the classroom. From September, um, we do aim to prioritise face-to-face teaching and academic activities on campus, small group teachings such as seminars, tutorials, smaller lectures and supervisions will primarily take place in person on campus, larger group teachings such as lectures will be delivered mainly online through a mix of live and recorded content and activities that will allow students to work at their own pace. This is subject to change of course in line with government guidelines so I would recommend you looking on our website for the most up-to-date information. So the university support When you start your um, programme, you're automatically assigned a personal tutor within your department and they'll sort of be your first point of call for any academic support needs you might have or any issues you want to raise surrounding your university studies. We also have our Student Advice and Wellbeing Centre located in the Paul Webley Wing and our team can provide specialist guidance and support on things like your finances, immigration advice, housing advice, disability support, well-being support and counselling and also professional mentoring. And finally we have our career service. You'll have access to them during your time at university as well as when you graduate and become an alumni of SOAS. They can help you find internships, part-time jobs, full-time jobs after you graduate as well as providing services such as interview and assessment centre prep and looking over and refining your CV to help you apply to jobs. There are a number of opportunities within the university to earn money whilst you're studying We have jobs within the student union, shop and bar, and you might also want to look into our student ambassador scheme, which allows you to work and represent the university on things such as open days, offer holder days and any lectures and seminars that might be held in the SAS campus. And finally, we're going to talk about life in London. A big part about coming to study at SAS is its location, and being in the centre of London, it is very unlikely that you'll ever get bored. So this is just a map of SOAS in comparison to the rest of London. SOAS is situated in the heart of Bloomsbury and as you can see on the map we are pretty much in central London, making it an excellent location to go to university. Our main accommodations are also on the map as you can see with the little yellow houses Um, and you can see that there are various accommodation options that are incredibly close to the SOAS campus. Our main SAS halls of residence, um, Dinwiddie House and Paul Robeson House, are in King's Cross, around a 20 minute walk away from our campus and again in a really excellent location with good transport links to the rest of London. There really are an endless things, endless number of things to do around the SAS campus. We have the British Museum just a 5 to 10 minute walk away from our campus, places like Oxford Street and Soho are a short walk away and there are also great places to explore and shop. Bloomsbury is also very well connected in terms of transport links and we have stations such as Tottenham Court Road, Russell Square and Euston, all short walks away that can take you pretty much wherever you need to go. So here we have our SAS campus. The SAS campus 
is made up of three main buildings. On the right, we have the main college building, which holds our student union, um, JCR, the library, the university canteen, as well as lecture theatres and seminar rooms and additional study spaces. On the left, we have the Brunei Gallery, which again has study spaces, lecture and seminar rooms, as well as the actual Brunei Gallery, which hosts a programme of changing contemporary and historical exhibitions from Asia, Africa and the Middle East. And this is something that is really worth checking out. If you know the area well, then you'll know that from every Monday to Saturday for the past 20 years, there's a Hare Krishna lunch. Um, and this is where you're able to get a free vegetarian lunch from the store. And it is something that's hugely popular amongst our students. And there will be a long line outside the Hare Krishna store pretty much every day. In front of you, you can see Senate House, of which SAS occupies the north part called the Paul Webley Wing. This is the newest addition to the SAAS campus, which opened in 2016. Um, every Thursday, in between this lovely green space between SAAS and Birkbeck on the right, um, there's a food market that hosts food stalls from all around the world, and it's a really great place to come with your friends for lunch. If you fancy something different, there are a number of food places in Russell Square, inside the Brunswick Centre, or all along Good Street, where, the food, where there's a food market, and lots of restaurants and cafes, all of which are a short walk away. Like I said previously, there really is an endless number of things to do in London. SAAS's campus is only a quick tube ride away from London's West End, with a range of musicals and plays on show. And during the summer, there are festivals such as Wireless and Lovebox, if you're interested in that. There are plenty of attractions nearby as well, such as the British Museum, Welcome Collection, National Gallery, as well as our own very, our very own um, Brunei Gallery. If you're from outside London, you might want to take the opportunity to see some of London's sights, including the London Eye, the Tower of London, Buckingham Palace, the Shard, Sky Garden and many, many more. London is a hugely multicultural city. There are restaurants, food markets and cafes with cuisines from all over the world and you'll always find something new to go with your friends. Finally, it is also worth noting that a lot of the things you can see and do and eat in London are free to enter um, or provide student discounts, which is perfect for students on a budget. Finally, I just want to um, give you a few ways you can get involved or chat to us if you do have any questions. We have UniBuddy, which gives you the opportunity to chat with students and hear about their experiences at SAAS so far. And you can find this on the on our SAAS website. Um, on the bottom right hand side, there is a section where you can chat with a student. If you're an international student, it will also have which country they're from, so you can find out a little bit more about what it's like being an international student at SAS. We also have a, no a number of other webinars on our website focusing on things like fees, funding and scholarships. And if you do have any further questions, feel free to contact study at soas.ac.uk and someone from our team will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you all for listening and have a lovely day.